Hey, what's up guys? Um, hopefully everyone had a good um, spring break, good rest, time off of classes and math. Um, so we're going to finish the last section of chapter 6 before we move on to the next unit. Um, so this is 6.5 solving rational equations, okay? So um, <clears throat> still going to need probably all the techniques, properties, rules that we've been learning this unit in regards to rational expressions. Um, only this time it's going to be applied to an equation, and this time we're solving for uh, the variable x. <coughs> okay, um, and so there's a couple different methods that you can go through um, when um, solving equations. It depends on how the uh, rational expression is set up. But in this case right here, so solving a rational equation by cross-multiplying, um, cross-multiplication is just a method of eliminating denominators. So if you take a look at this um, rational expression, uh, rational equation that we have right here, you can see that on the left side it's 3 divided by x plus 1, and on the right side is 9 divided by 4x plus 5. On both sides, x is in the denominator and we don't want x in the denominator if we're going to solve for x. We need to get x out of the denominator and we do that through cross multiplying. <coughs> now cross multiplying is just a shortcut method. Um, basically what it says is you take the denominator here and you multiply it with the numerator here. You take the denominator here and multiply it with the numerator here. I mean that, that works, that uh, understanding works but technically what you're doing is you're multiplying this side um, by x plus 1 and this side by x plus 1. But whenever you multiply the left side by x plus 1, those denominators cancel. Okay? And so that's why you multiply this side by uh, straight across because on the left side you're, you're technically you're multiplying both sides by x plus one just on the left side it's canceling and you're doing the same thing on the right side where you're going to multiply both the left and the right side by 4x plus 5 but on the right side 4x plus 5 will cancel while here it will, it will multiply by the numerator <coughs> so that's the idea behind cross multiplying but in any case um, so if you have um, a rational expression that looks like this, you can cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply 9 and x plus 1, and we still have our equation that will be equal to 3 times by 4x plus 5. So you see, by doing this, we eliminate our denominators. Um, now just solve for x. So I'll distribute this 9 in. So 9x plus 9 equal to. 12x plus 15 and it's just a one variable equation so I'm going to subtract 9x on both sides and subtract 15 on both sides so here those cancel and this becomes um, uh, that should be negative 6 um, equal to and those would cancel and then 3x okay and then I could divide by 3 to get x by itself so x will be equal to negative 2 okay and just always make sure that um, negative 2 isn't a domain restriction here so meaning that if you plug that into your solution or if you plug it into the equation, that doesn't make the denominator zero. So in this case, we're good. <coughs> okay. Now um, here are some more examples on cross multiplying that you guys can go through. Um, I can go through number two. So cross multiplying x times by x is x squared equal to negative four and x plus 1. So x squared is equal to negative 4x minus 4. So at this point, I hope that you guys are able to recognize that this is a quadratic and it's a trinomial. So we need to solve it like a trinomial quadratic. 
Um, so to do that, I'm going to add 4x and add 4 to both sides. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 4 equal to 0 because these will cancel. And then x squared plus 4x plus 4, um, that can factor to x, x plus 2 and x plus 2. Um, equal to 0. So take your factors. So there's really only one factor, x plus 2, and set it equal to 0. So that means x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2. x equals negative 2. Okay. Um, so yeah, that should be our only solution there. Okay. Now these ones, uh, again, they're probably going to just end up being more quadratics as you cross multiply, but again, I don't think that's anything that you should be surprised by, or it shouldn't be anything new. Um, but I'm going to keep, uh, if you guys want to do these, I can at least give you the answers. Here you should get x is equal to negative 54. And for number 3, you should get that x is equal to 0. For 4, you should get x is equal to negative 3 and negative 5. So if you want to do those and make sure that you get them right, those are the solutions. But I'm going to move along here. Um, okay, so in this case right here, there's honestly two things that you can do. So um, the suggested uh, means of solution here is to solve using the lowest common denominator okay now you can do that um, just know that you can't multiply unless you adjust the equation okay so you, you see here that we, we we can't cross multiply this right here because of this operation right here, this addition operation that's going on right here. So if you want, you could add these together first by getting a common denominator, and once you do that, you eliminate the addition operation. So if I were were to do that, again, I'm, I wouldn't suggest doing it this way, but I could multiply this by x and multiply this by 4, so then I get 20 plus 7x divided by 4x because then I get my common denominator so I'm multiplying this by x and this one by 4 right so I have a common denominator of 4x and then I can add them together so that would be 20 plus 7x equal to negative 9 divided by x so at this point I could do a cross multiplication I could multiply this x by the numerator which would be 20x plus 7x squared equal to um, I think that should be 36 uh, minus 36 X okay and you can do that however um, I don't think it's necessary to uh, do that it would make it I think a little bit more difficult um, so I'm going to solve using a least common denominator okay now notice that for every single term in this expression the denominator has a factor of x and 4. This one has an x. So that means my least common denominator is 4x. Now what that means I can do is I can multiply each side by 4x and let's see what happens if I multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by 4x and I'm going to multiply this side by 4x. Now on the left side I have to distribute this. So I have to take the 4x and I have to uh, multiply it um, by 5 divided by x and by 7 divided by 4. Okay, so that means I do 4x and this is going to be multiplied by 5 divided by x plus 4x times by 7 divided by 4 equal to 4x times by negative 9 divided by x. Okay. Now what this does, so let's work through the first term right here. So this term right here. Now when I multiply these two expressions together, because there's a factor of x on the numerator and a factor of x on the denominator, they cancel. So then it's just going to be 4 times by 5 
which is going to be 20. Now for this expression right here, when I multiply 4x by 7 divided by 4, the 4 will cancel with this 4, because it's on the numerator and the other one's on the denominator. So then I'll be left with 7x equal to, again, when I multiply these together, the factor here will cancel. So then it's 4 times by negative 9, which is negative 36. And there you go. So we've eliminated our denominator. We have no denominator, and especially no denominator, with a factor, with a variable in the denominator. And now I can solve for x. So here, I'll subtract 20. Subtract 20. This remains over here. This cancels. And then negative 36 minus 20 is negative 56. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. So x should equal negative 8. Okay. And then for b, uh, same thing still applies. Finding the least common denominator, okay? Now, the least common denominator, so let's look at each term. This one has a denominator of 1, um, and these also have a factor of 1 in their denominator, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, but here is a factor of x minus 5, and this is a factor, has a factor of x in the denominator. So that means my least common denominator is x and x minus 5. That is my least common denominator. So that's what I'm going to multiply um, every term by. I need to multiply every term by x and x minus 5. So when I multiply this term by x and x minus 5, I get x and x minus 5. Subtract. Okay, now this term right here, when I take, um, I'll leave my least common denominator up there so I know what it is. So I can multiply, I can do x times by x minus 5, and this is going to be multiplied by 8 over x minus 5. And this is equal to 3 divided by x times by x times by x minus 5. So in this term right here, the x minus 5s will cancel. And then on the right side of the equation, the x's will cancel. So then when I rewrite this, I still have, uh, I'm going to distribute this. So I have x squared minus 5x minus x times by 8. So it's going to be 8x equal to 3x minus 15. Okay. Now to break down all my terms, I have, um, so this is will be another quadratic if you haven't seen. So this is a quadratic and it has a trin, it should be a trinomial, but um, x squared and then when I add these together, um, I get a um, 13 minus 13x equal to 3x minus 15. And then because it's a quadratic, I want to get everything onto one side. So minus 3x minus 3x plus 15. So I get x squared minus 16x plus 15 equal to 0. So quadratic trinomial to, to solve, let's factor. So to factor this, I need to find two numbers that multiply to be 15, but add to be 16. So that's going to be, um, let's see, minus 1 and minus 15. And then I take both factors, so x minus 1 equals 0, or x minus 15 equals 0. In this case, x would have to equal 1. And in this case, x would have to equal 15 when I solve for x. Okay, so these are the solutions. But again, we, we should check and make sure that these solutions 
don't um, that they give us correct answers. We need to make sure that first that it doesn't um, make the denominator zero and that it actually makes them correct. So you should be checking your solutions, okay? So that means plugging these in and making sure that making sure that um, the answer holds true. So let's try number. Let's try one. So if I plug one in for x. That gives me 1 minus 8 divided by 1 minus 5, which is negative 4, equal to 3 divided by 1, which is just going to be um, 3. So that's 1 minus negative 2 equal to 3, which is 1 plus 2 equal to 3, and 3 is equal to 3, so that holds. So 1 is a solution. And then um, 15. So if I do 1 minus 8 over 15 minus 5, which is 10, equal to 3 over 15, which is just going to be 1 fifth. Okay, so this is 1 minus um, 4 fifths equal to 1 fifth. And one minus four fifth would be one fifth. So yeah, one fifth is equal to one fifth. So it checks out. So both of these are solutions. Okay. Um, now let's check out number four. And this one would still be using the least common denominator. So take a look at what we have here. So notice that this has a factor of x minus three this has a factor of x plus 3 and this has a factor of both x minus 3 and x plus 3 because if you were to factor x squared minus 9 using the difference of squares that's x sorry x plus 3 and x minus 3 okay so let me go ahead and actually write this expression out in that way so this is um, equal to 6 divided by x minus 3 equal to 8x squared divided by x minus 3 and x plus 3 because that is what x squared minus 9 is equal to minus 4x divided by x plus 3 okay now it's easier here to see that this has a denominator of x minus 3 x plus 3 and this one of both so that means our least common denominator is x minus 3 and x plus 3. So that's what we're going to multiply this equation by. So for me, I kind of do a shortcut and I kind of write it like this. So x minus 3 and x plus 3. Now I do this because it's easier for me to see what cancels. I go through each term and just look at what cancels on the de denominator. So if I look at this term right here, so x and x minus 3, that means these would cancel, so I'm multiplying this 6 by the x plus 3. Okay, So that would go away, so it would be 6, which is from here, times by x plus 3. And this is equal to, and then I move to this term right here, multiply it by the least common denominator, but since it ha since the least common denominator is what the denominator is, that means all of it will cancel, so I'm just going to be left with 8x squared. And then here, so I still have subtract 4x, but I no longer have my denominator of x plus 3, because that will cancel with this one right here. So it's going to be, so left over is going to be x minus 3. Okay. Now I distribute and simplify, so that should be 6x plus 18 equal to 8x squared minus uh, 4x squared plus 12x. So again, 6x plus 18 equal to 4x squared plus 12x. And it's a quadratic, so let's get everything to one side. So I'll subtract 18 and subtract 6x to both sides. So minus 6x minus 18. So this should be 0 equal to 4x squared. Um, so 4x squared um, 
Let's see. Um, that should be plus 6x minus 18. Okay, now we're going to solve for um, x. So to make our life easier, because this is an equation, I can just go ahead and divide everything by the least common denominator of these terms, which would be 2. If I divide everything by 2, I'm not breaking any rules because it's an equation. So 0 divided by 2 is just going to be 0. 4x squared divided by 2 is going to be uh, 2x squared. 6x divided by 2 is 3x. And negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. Okay. So now here, I'm going to bring this over here so we have more room. So 2x squared plus 3x minus 9 equals 0. Um, I need to factor, but um, I have a uh, leading coefficient of 2. Okay, so let's see if I take 2 and negative 9, that's negative 18. So factors of 18 that add to be 3, so that should be negative 6 um, or positive 6 and negative 3. So 2x squared plus 6x minus 3x minus 9 equal to 0. And then factor by grouping. So take out the 2x here, and I'll be left with um, x plus 3. And then here I can take out a negative 3, and I'll be left with x plus 3. So then I have a uh, x plus 3 factor in both of them. And then left over is 2x minus 3 equal to 0. And now I take both of these. So x plus 3 equals 0. So here, x would equal negative 3. And then 2x minus 3 equals 0. So then I'd have to add 3 and divide by 2. So x would be equal to 3 divided by 2. Now you just need to make sure that these solutions will work. So if I plug these in, so if I plug in, let's try negative 3 here. So notice here that I have a domain restriction. x cannot equal negative 3 or else this denominator here would be 0. So in this case right here, x will not equal negative 3. That's not a solution. But 3 over 2 should work just fine. Okay. Alright, now um, that should do it for these type of problems. Here are some example problems that you guys can go through. Um, so if you guys want to go through those, I'll just give you the answers here. So for 5, x will equal negative 7 over 38. For 6, x should equal negative 5 over 8. For 7, x will equal 10. For 8, x will equal negative 1 or, and 4. For 9, there will actually be no solution. So probably both of them the solutions make the denominator 0. Um, so for 10, x will equal negative 6. For 11, x will equal 3 and negative 7. And here, you're going to probably want to use quadratic formula. And if you do that, you should get x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 33 divided by 2. Okay. Um, so I'm going to jump to number 5, example number 5 now. Um, and this is finding the inverse of a rational function. So um, inverse, if you guys remember, finding inverse means that you swap the position of x and y and you solve for y again. So we did this back in chapter 4. So find the inverse. So consider the function f of x is equal to 2 divided by x plus 3. Determine whether the inverse of f is a function. Then find the inverse. So determine if the inverse is a function. 
So to do that, um, if we are to graph this function f, um, let's take a look at that. We can actually do that here. So graph this function of 2 divided by x plus 3. Now this is a rational function. So you can see that, that that's what we learned about um, in 6.2 we learned about graphing rational um, functions. So it, it, we can check if the inverse is a um, is a function by making sure that the horizontal that um, well there's something called the um, vertical line test if you guys remember I'm not sure if you guys have gone through the vertical line test before but what the vertical line test suggests is that if you have some function like this if you if I take a vertical line like this and if I move it along my function and if it only crosses once um, for every x variable then um, it's a function um, and so this would be a function right here now if we're checking to see if it's inverse is a function now the inverse um, remember that we I'm not sure if you guys remember but inverse functions are just the same function but if you if you rotate it 90 degrees that's what an inverse function is so basically what that means is that if we want to check if the inverse function is a function then that means we need a test using a horizontal line test so here a, using a vertical line test it checks out that this function is indeed um, a function um, now to check if its inverse is a function we use the horizontal line test so if we have a horizontal line so let me draw what this function looks like right here so this function generally looks something like this right so if I take a horizontal uh, line I need to make sure that this horizontal line only crosses my function at once and be so like right here there's a asymptote so right here the function doesn't cross at all so it does it should check out that this function um, is that this uh, that the inverse of this function will be a function because it does pass the horizontal line test so um, we can indeed say that the so when it says to determine if the if the inverse is a function we can say yes the inverse is a function so the inverse will be a function and now we want to find what the inverse function is so again we take our equation y is equal to 2 over x plus 3 we swap x and y so x will equal 2 over y plus 3 and then we can solve for y again and here I'm just, just going to use cross multiplication because this is the same thing as x over 1 so if I multiply this together so it would be x and then y times by x um, uh, sorry no jump in the gun so uh, y plus 3 equal to 2 um, and I'm trying to get y by itself so I actually don't want to distribute this in because what that does is it multiplies the x and the y together and I want to get y by itself so instead I'm going to divide by x because that will get rid of my x factor here so then I get y plus 3 is equal to 2 divided by x and then I can subtract 3 from both sides so then y will equal 2 over x minus 3 so this right here this function right here um, is the inverse function so 2x minus 3 so if I graph this right here the inverse function so if I do 2 divided by x and then minus 3 so here's the inverse function 
So the inverse function again is just rotated 90 degrees. Okay? And so notice that if for the red lines, if we did a vertical line test, it would be checking if it's a function. But it's the same thing as doing a horizontal line test for the blue function. Okay. All right, so that should pretty much do it for today. Um, and then if you want to do these examples, these exercises, in both cases, the inverse is a function. And here you should get the y is equal to 8 divided by x plus 3 as its inverse. And here you should get y is equal to 12 over x minus 9 as the inverse function. Okay, and now that should pretty much do it for the rest of Unit 6.